All five Democratic primary candidates will be invited for interviews over the next several months. Andre Cherney is the first to join us. Welcome to Square Off. Thanks for having me. So I was reading up on you, and you were a Democratic political prodigy of sorts, volunteering for the Michael Dukakis campaign when you were 12. You were a 21-year-old speechwriter for President Bill Clinton. You've been a Democrat for a long, long time. What did you learn at that early age that stuck with you today as you've grown up and matured and have a family? Yeah. You know, what I learned first and foremost is that progress is possible. Uh, when I was working in the Clinton White House, we were able to balance the budget. We were able to expand health care for people. We were able to protect Social Security. Uh, I worked with then-Vice President Gore to uh, help sound the alarm for the climate crisis that we're now facing. And I also learned that the decisions that get made in Washington and throughout our political process matter. They matter to people. Uh, you know, as you said, I am somebody who's a father. Uh, my kids are in middle school and, uh, and high school now. They're fifth generation Arizonans. And they're fifth generation through my wife's family. Uh, we've lived here for, for 20 uh, years and been active in this community. My four grandparents, though, were concentration camp survivors. And my parents grew up under a communist dictatorship. And I was born here in the United States, but always grew up believing that we shouldn't take our democracy for granted. And yet, right now, when we look at what's happening in Washington, we're seeing exactly that happening. We're seeing our democracy under threat. We're seeing the climate crisis. We're seeing economic opportunity disappear for people. And what I learned in those years was that the decisions that we make in Washington are really ones that have a profound impact throughout our entire country. Let's stay with the, the climate crisis. Phoenix is closing the books on the ho its hottest month ever, an alarming record that's part of a two-decade trend line. We've been going this way uh, for quite a while. You mentioned your experience with Al Gore, known for his work in that area. Also, the business you worked for for several years uh, was involved, the financial services business was involved in sustainability. So if you're elected, what policies would you pursue in Congress that you think could make a difference? especially when it comes to heat. Absolutely. Well, look, uh, climate crisis is here now, right? We just walk out of this air-conditioned uh, studio and we see the heat. We see the water issues. We see the drought. Arizona is ground zero for the climate crisis, and it is a clear and present danger to our people's future. The opposite side of that, though, is it is an enormous economic opportunity for Arizona. Arizona should be the solar state. We should be to clean energy what Detroit is to cars, what uh, Silicon Valley is to computers. Uh, we should be the place that is creating those industries, creating those jobs of the future that'll mean not just great jobs, but money in people's pockets. And the kinds of policies we need is policies that help the private sector grow and invest. As you said, I started a business in this space and ran it for 10 years. We helped millions of people around the country move billions of dollars out of the reach of being used to fund oil and gas pipelines and drilling. Uh, we planted hundreds of millions of trees to fight climate change, not only around the world, but right here in Phoenix, working with Mayor Gallego. Those are the kinds of policies we need that are gonna help the private sector grow, help our economy grow, and help grow our middle class through clean energy revolution. Is it time for a carbon tax? I think it's less about making the current energy sources more expensive and more about making the future energy sources uh, more attainable for people and, and less expensive. And so for me, I would prefer to say, let's put our energy behind building those new industries, helping to bring down, as it's already been coming down, the price of solar, the price of wind, carbon capture. We saw, for instance, the CHIPS Act, which was a major investment and is a major investment in computer uh, chips and semiconductors. It's had a profound impact on Arizona. It received bipartisan support from President Biden and Democrats in Congress, Governor Ducey, uh, unfortunately, David Schweikert voted against it. But we're seeing right now one third of all union carpenters in Arizona are working on either the TSMC or the uh, Intel fabs. We need to have that same kind of approach when it comes to clean energy uh, and really drive the economy of the future. Uh, you've been successful in business, other areas, but not so successful in the <laughs> ballot box. You've lost three races. Last one you ran was 11 years ago. What did defeat teach you? 
Well, I think you do learn more from your, your failures than your uh, successes. Uh, when I ran uh, 12 years ago, 11 years ago, uh, it was in the primary against uh, then state senator Kirsten Sinema. And, you know, back then we tried to warn people. We said, this is somebody who is cozy with playing footsie with the Republican power brokers in the state, uh, all the Republican lobbyists down in the state uh, legislature. And a lot of people said, oh, you know what? A Democrat's a Democrat is a Democrat. And I, I think people are more sophisticated about that now. And so in this campaign, I'm going to be talking about my record, about a track record that people can trust of having taken on these big fights, of having opposed Republicans in Washington when they were trying to privatize Social Security, when they were trying to put uh, justices on the Supreme Court and succeeded in putting justices on the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, uh, when they were opposing uh, gun safety legislation. My work as Democratic Party chair here in the state of taking on Jan Brewer, taking on Russell Pierce. Uh, people need to look at the track record of the candidates, and we're going to make sure that people know my history in that space. All right, lightning around. I'm going to ask you a few questions, keeping in mind that whoever wins this district will need Republicans and independent voters, uh, not solely uh, Democrats. Reproductive rights. Do you support any limitations on a woman's right to an abortion? Look, I think government should stay out of people's bedrooms. And I think governments should stay out of people's doctor's offices. Uh, that is a decision that people should be making with their uh, physician, with their conscience. Uh, I don't believe that it is the role of government to be limiting re reproductive rights. So no limitations? I, I think we should be looking at going back to where Roe v. Wade was. And, and that was something that worked for uh, almost 50 years. Uh, that is the kind of approach we should be starting at. And then let's have a conversation from there. Have to end it there. Andre Cherney, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck. Thanks for having me.